How do you transition from serious? Because at this point, you're getting job offers. You have got uh, asked to come over to hot twice. How do you wind up on power in this amazing, iconic morning show? How does that come into play? Well, I stayed at Sirius for six years. And one thing I did learn is when you feel like you're not happy somewhere, it's time to go. And so instead of staying somewhere and complaining about how unhappy you are and bitching, do your job, but have a plan to get out. And so I had a lot of people coming at me. They offered me Philly. They were talking to me about Atlanta. And then Power 105, they came to me. G-SPIN was like, look, we want to get you you know, on this morning show. And so I was literally leaving the meeting uh, from Philly. And at Philly, they were like, listen, we want you to sign today. You know, we'll do whatever it takes. We're going to give you the morning show. They were like, we're going to rename the station after you. <laughs> while you know, to help. Her. It was crazy. And I was like, it all sounded so great to me. They were like, you could bring in who you want, bring in your own team, however you want to do this show. And so I was walking back to my car. And while I was walking back to my car, that's when G-Spin called me and was like, listen, we want to talk to you about doing this morning show. The only problem was, you know, radio, it can move slow. So I had to turn down that job in Philly and hope that New York was going to work. Mm -hmm. And so I turned that down. And then I had to wait a few months for them to even come at me with a contract <laughs> for New York. And I was like, man, I hope I didn't make a mistake and blow an opportunity. And fortunately, it did eventually come around and I made the right decision and opted to wait it out because I didn't want to get tied up in a contract you know, in another city and then not be able to seize this opportunity. So it was just weighing it out and figuring out what would be best for me. So that's how that happened. Was this the same station as Charlemagne was at out in Philly? Yes, it was after Charlemagne um, had gotten fired. I think it must have been 100.3 or something. Because uh -huh. they were like, we're going to call it 100 point ye is what they were saying. <laughs> <laughs> And, you know, you got to think this whole time, I'm not a radio person, so I don't know any program directors. I don't really know a lot of other radio personalities. And that Sirius was my question, too. That, that's, yeah. that's what my question was going to be. Did you know um, G-Spin at the time? I knew G-Spin. You did but, know G-Spin. You know, yeah, because we were in New York. And so I knew G-Spin just from being out and about. And I was really tight with Michael Kaiser from Atlantic Records. And mm -hmm. so a lot of people there I knew just because of him. But I didn't know these other, like, honestly, the program director there, um, Boogie D, he hit me up on Facebook and was like, hey, you know, I wanted to see if we could have a conversation about bringing you over here. And that's how we initi um, initiated the conversation. I didn't personally know him. And so a lot of times, even now to this day, like, I feel like Envy and Charlamagne know all of these other, like, PDs and personalities, and I don't still. And it's something I have to be better at. I know a lot more, obviously, but it's just not, like, they're like, oh, yeah, I remember when I worked at this station and and it wasn't like that for me because mm -hmm. I've only been two places, Sirius and iHeart. So for you, you get over there. We all know what the Breakfast Club has become. Did you know off the bat that there was a chemistry between you three and there was something special waiting? I often hear that it didn't start. I mean, me being a listener, it seems like you guys were rocking from day one. But I guess the numbers weren't. Hey, pardon me, I'm in Brooklyn. I know you hear the sirens. Yes. <laughs> they know. Okay, okay. 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 <laughs> so did you know, although the numbers may not have shown right away, did you guys know we got something special here? There's just too much chemistry between the three of us. Believe that we all knew each other anyway ahead of time, and so you know we were all going really hard at that time. And I, I just remember earlier on there were some like issues that people had with each other. You know, you know, Envy is sensitive, and Charlemagne could be a little crazy. So, <laughs> but I think in general, everybody just wanted to win because so many people were telling us it wouldn't work. You know, people were telling us that a show with three people where no one is the lead person on the show can't work. You know, most morning shows would be like Steve Harvey in the morning yep. or it's always one person. And then, you know, the Tom Joyner show, uh, the Wendy Williams show. And they were like, that can't work. It can't work like that. And so a lot of people said that. And now you see everybody's doing shows where it's like just the name of the show and not one person. Because now people saw that the formula worked 
And so people are trying to do it everywhere. But I think we just all were determined to make it work because, you know, Charlemagne didn't have a job at the time and he was anxious to get back into radio. He'll tell you he was at home, so just doing nothing. And then Envy had given up his shift to come to mornings. He didn't really want to do mornings because his experience on the, uh, you know, working with Miss Jones in the morning wasn't that great. So he didn't want to do mornings. And so everybody felt like we got to make this happen. We got to win. And it didn't at first feel like it was going to happen. And it does take a while for people to be put together to find a chemistry because it's not like we had been working together prior to that. It's not like we had any prep. It was just, bang, you're on now. Let's go and let's figure this out. But to their credit, what I will say is I think their plan always was to syndicate us, but they wanted to make sure that we were ready to be syndicated, which meant that we had to have our chemistry right. We had to have our segments right. We had to prove to them that we all were dedicated to doing what we were doing before they invested the time and money into syndicating us into other markets. And so that's how that happened. But I do feel like they had a plan all along. Well, I only ask you this because so many people set out you know, they start their business or they start, set out on these new journeys and they might believe they have a great idea. They might believe I have a great product, but it doesn't immediately take off. And that's it why doesn't. I was asking you, did you guys, you guys, not necessarily iHeart, not corporate, did you guys know we have something special here? If we cannot get fired, even though the numbers don't show right away, as long as we continue to go hard, we're going to eventually break through. And it goes to that old saying, persistence overcomes resistance. And I want, and you know, I'm trying to bring a point out because people tend to stop too early. Soon as they hit a little opposition, as soon as they hit a bump in the road, they start to question their own great idea and their own greatness. So for you guys, again, you know, I, I know that iHeart had a plan for you guys eventually. You know, I just want to know, did you feel that this was, I don't care what the numbers say. We, we it's something yeah. special here. Yeah, and I think you have to feel that way, right? Because imagine doing something and then feeling like this is terrible. Like you have to feel like, okay, this is great. We just need to do this or this is going to get to this level once we do this. And we were doing all these little skits and things like that to just promote the show and go viral. And we understood the importance of being on World Star at that time. And we understood the importance of making sure that we had these little viral videos that we were doing and, and filming our interviews and things like that. We understood how important that was. You know, I have a marketing background. One of the first things I said was we need a dedicated camera person. We need to make sure that we are online. The reason people even knew who I was was because of the videos I was putting out back then. And I don't think people would have really known me like that otherwise, because it wasn't like everyone had serious. And so I understood the importance of that. But I don't believe that you'll be successful if you don't believe that you have something special because you're not going to work that hard if you don't think that it's something amazing. And I do believe in patience. I think a lot of times people see other people's success and feel like that should be them and it should happen quickly because they think it happened quickly, but they don't understand the years that came before a person made it to the level that they made it to. And I think we're so obsessed with instantly going on Instagram and becoming famous when the truth is that's fleeting, but if you really have something that you built and you have relationships and you have knowledge and you're always educating yourself, then that is how you remain and stay in the game and always make sure that you um, excel. And that's what I, and even with all of my businesses that I have, that's a lesson that I always teach myself. Like I, we just opened a store in Detroit, private label. It's a hair extension store. Mm -hmm. And to me, it just opened a couple of weeks ago, but I don't think that everyone knows that's there yet. It's going to take time. It's going to take months, maybe even over a year for people to know the store is there to actually come to the store. There's so many things going on and so many distractions that we can't ever assume that people know what's going on, you know? So I just do feel like we have to always constantly be trying to figure out how can I take this to the next level? We have to constantly just reevaluate things, but also have some patience. Such great points, such great points. 
What's up guys? Thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video. Truly appreciate you. If you like anything you heard here today, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you know anybody that can benefit from this message, feel free to share. Peace and love.